Welcome to You Brew Kombucha. Today, we're gonna cover how kombucha brews change with the seasons. So if you've been brewing kombucha for any length of time, you might notice that lots of different variables can affect how your brew turns out. And if you've been brewing consistently over the course of a few months, you might notice the temperature and the weather and how seasons change might greatly affect how long it takes for your brew to ferment. If you haven't already checked out my video on temperature, I highly recommend that you go take a look at that. Um, but in a nutshell, I'm just gonna talk about how cold weather and warm weather can affect your kombucha. If it happens to be particularly cold where you are, it will slow down the fermentation process. Um, I, generally, I generally recommend that you ferment kombucha um, between 65 and 85 degrees. That tends to be the sweet spot for, um, for, for good consistent kombucha brewing. If it gets really, really cold where you are um, and it's on the lower end of that spectrum, it will likely just take longer for your brew to ferment. So as I've covered in other videos, cold temperatures basically um, put the yeast and bacteria into a state of dormancy. So they won't die necessarily, but they'll just kind of go to sleep. So if the yeasts and bacteria are asleep or dormant and they're not acidifying the brew properly or as quickly, um, then it may just need a few more days or a few more weeks for it to get to the perfect sweet and sour spot that you like for your brew. I also get a lot of questions from people who ask why um, in the winter time, sometimes their batches don't produce a new SCOBY or um, they produce a very, very thin SCOBY. I wouldn't really worry about that. Um, oftentimes, that happens a lot to me too in the winter time. Um, if I am brewing a batch, not all of my batches will produce a new SCOBY and that's totally fine as long as it's still getting sour over time. In the winter time, sometimes it takes me up to two to three weeks for a batch to get to that perfect sweet and sour spot. But you'll just need to kind of taste it as you go. And again, I have a whole other video on um, how to tell when your brew is done and ready to bottle. So if you haven't checked that out, you totally can. I will say that as temperatures tend to drop and as the weather tends to get cooler, there is a slight risk that your SCOBY might have a harder time adjusting to the lower temperature. And as it kind of moves into a state of dormancy or semi-dormancy, there is the likelihood that mold could come and infect your brew if your SCOBY isn't resilient enough. So while I typically recommend using about two cups of starter tea per batch, if I know it's gonna get colder in the next couple of weeks or so and I've got a batch brewing, what I'll do is I'll add a whole other cup of starter tea just to make sure that it's inoculated with a lot of good bacteria and yeast to really make sure that that fermentation process is kick-started. Now in the summertime, obviously average room temperature is going to get a little bit warmer. So your brew is probably going to ferment pretty fast. Now, if it's summertime or if you're brewing in particularly warmer temperatures, then that just means that your brew will likely ferment faster. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but I would just caution you to taste it more frequently and earlier on in your process to make sure that it doesn't turn um, too acidic too quickly for you. And again, it's not gonna hurt you if your brew ferments too quickly. You can always take steps to alleviate the acidity by diluting it with sweet tea or by adding fruit when you're ready to flavor and bottle it. But if you are looking to make your brew as consistent as possible, as the seasons change, you're just gonna need to be a little bit more in tune with your particular brew to adjust the time period of fermentation accordingly, depending on how you like it to taste. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any tips or tricks or questions for me, feel free to comment down below. You can always find more resources at youbrewkombucha.com. And if you don't already follow me on Instagram, you can find me at youbrewkombucha. Happy brewing.